When we can model real life situations with linear functions, finding the slopes of those functions and those graphs usually tells us something really interesting or important about the situation that we're modeling. In this video, I'll show you two examples of a situation that is modeled with a linear function, and I'll show you how to interpret the slope in those examples. So let's look at a couple of examples of some linear functions. Uh, we'll calculate the slope real quickly, and then we'll talk about what that slope tells us about the context. Okay, so first example, Lindsay's on a road trip. Uh, we have a graph of the time in hours uh, and the distance in kilometers at every time. So we've got two points here labeled. If we calculate the slope, we're going over and we're going up. Uh, we can use the formula or we can use rise over run. So my run, I go from one to two and a half. So that's run of 1.5. And my rise, I go from 100 to 250, so that's 150. So slope is 150 divided by 1.5, which is 100. Now what does that tell us, though? Um, it's kind of hard to tell unless you actually look at the units that we had. So we'll go back and we'll add in what the units were. So this run, the 1.5, what was the 1.5? Well, it was the time, that was hours, 1.5 hours. And I'll add that down here too. And then my rise, the 150, that was kilometers. So this means that my slope is 100 kilometers divided by So it's 100 kilometers per hour. So this tells us that Lindsay traveled 100 kilometers per hour. All right, in this example, um, this is a silly one. We've got Milo the monkey. Uh, he's a video game hero that I made up. Um, and we have a graph of the number of bananas that Milo ate um, compared to his strength level. All right, we've got the little, uh, we've got his, his strength score on the bottom of the screen. Um, and bananas are good. He likes bananas and they make him stronger. So if we look here, I'll choose these two points just because there's a little more space around them. The rise. We go from 6 up to 10. So that's four. This is a good uh, time to point out, like we had to do it over here too, but make sure you always are checking the scales, especially if you've got a graph that's on graph paper. Sometimes people just count the squares, uh, which is fine if you're going up by ones, uh, but make sure you count. I went from six up to 10. So uh, even though it's sort of two squares, that's a rise of four. And then the run. We went from 1 over to 2, so it's a run of 1. So the slope, now let's use the lesson we learned earlier, that you will put the units on right away. The rise was the strength, and the run, that 1, that was 1 banana. So the slope is 4 strength. divided by one banana, which is, and four divided by one is four strength per banana. So what this tells us is that Milo gains four strengths Uh, every time he eats a banana. Okay. Um, and also, let's just make a quick note. These aren't connected. We haven't connected the dots here because it's not really likely. It's possible that he might eat these bananas uh, sort of continuously. He might eat 0 0.28 bananas here and uh, this would be 0 0.49 bananas, but really more likely is that he hadn't eaten any, and then he ate one banana. 
so that we've got this continuous, uh, this discrete, these are discrete points, and we're not connecting them, because we're only interested in whole numbers of bananas. Okay, so um, the takeaway message here is if you want to figure out what that slope is telling you about your situation, start and look at the units. Write the units in, and then once you've got the units, for example, kilometers per hour or strength per banana, it's much easier to figure out what's, what that slope is telling you. All right, good luck.